Hello all, and welcome back to High Ridge Farm with me, the Walrus. We are in our first week here of the autumn or fall season and our final three days of year three on High Ridge Farm. We're slowly progressing through to my desired challenge of trying to achieve perfection by the end of year three. My first task for the day is to visit Ginger Island. Now, the main logic and method for this madness is that I want to try and use Ginger Island as my main money spinner because I've got lots of flat land that is um, continuous, which might sound like a peculiar thing to sort of consider, but when you look at the layout of the um, High Ridge Farm and the, the sort of like the more mountainous layout, the large river that cuts through it does prevent a lot of general uh, useful crop growth. Because of that, it is slightly harder to reasonably facilitate a good layout for the Junimo. And I'm kind of looking at being lazy and getting the Junimo uh, to be able to, well, access everything. That, that is the big game plan here. But of course, one of the other things that I'm very pleased about here on um, Ginger Island is the fact that I have access to a lot of free land that isn't actually farmland. And it might sound a bit daft with that, but my logic has been if I can plant down a large selection of um, mahogany trees to generate sap, because that will allow me to cr uh, generate more um, in the way of sap, which is phenomenally helpful towards the production of the best fertilizer in the game, because I need 40 of it, plus one iridium bar for each sap generation, which is not a small amount, really, and it is somewhat frustrating having to deal with that. However, by using um, Ginger Island and its large quantity of sap generation, we should be able to, you know, facilitate a half-decent um, way of around it. So, fingers crossed on that one. For now, though, I'm going to venture into the volcano itself because I want to gather some more stone. I'm really, to be fair, after more of the gemstones and other miscellania because I have a sneaking suspicion that as part of the my personal quest for the autumn season is I want to try to build all of the craftables that I haven't built already. Now some of the craftables are going to be things like the rings. Now the rings are going to be, I don't think, a particularly difficult thing, but I am aware that some of them do require gemstones uh, to actually be made. So they are going to be where I'm sort of focusing on at the moment. So that's that's my logic and that method on that madness. So the other thing I've kind of got to look at is stone and wood. Now, I do have a reasonable amount of stone already, but it's the wood that I'm lacking. And I'm considering what am I going to do with the quarry area? Because the quarry area is somewhere that I'm sure could be phenomenally useful if I needed lots of stone and other resources and didn't want to venture into the mines. But for me, I'm kind of looking at it as an opportunity area for woodland expansion. Now, I have saturated the area heavily with just, gen um, like, not quite commonplace, but standard, uh, well, the normal trees and just slap them absolutely everywhere but what i'm considering at the moment is do i try and organize it a little bit better by using some of the flooring to sort of prevent any of the rocks from spawning and to sort of dictate where the trees grow and that's that's a, a thought process i'm currently having whether it's a particularly good one no, that's a very different question, unfortunately, because goodness knows it could be. But it could also be a complete waste of time, because the rock generation is 
Not the most annoying thing, but I would prefer it if there were fewer of them. Because, of course, the fewer rocks that are uh, lying around and littering the ground, the easier it is going to be for me to access the trees. And if I use that as a general forestry area, that will be probably my best plan of action, I think. But that's what I've considered so far. And, as of course, as I mentioned previously, I could be very, very wrong on that. So, we're going to work our way through all of the detritus and debris that is littering the volcano, because I'm also after a lot of iron and copper, because both of them are phenomenally helpful for the fact that they are used for the manufacture of the kegs. And kegs themselves are the primary sort of like driving factor I have for making money at the moment. Because with kegs, I can make uh, the wine and uh, the juices as well. And they are the greatest money spinner that I have access to at the moment. And that is really where my my logic is lying. Um, if I can use that and really just generate stuff. But as well as that, I also am aware that I need a lot of iridium going forward. So uh, there's a lot of considerations I need to make at the moment as to what can I generate, how am I going to do it, and what needs doing. So it's a lot of the time it's just weird method to madness silliness, but, you know, there is a, a logic to some of my decision making, I promise. Might not be the, the greatest logic, but it is there. And that's uh, kind of what I'm relying on at this moment in time. So, now the pearl itself, I forget what that actually is useful for. I believe it's only really used as a trading commodity when you can take that down to um, the chap in the desert with his store. And that's really the only place that it's worth taking it to. I don't believe it's a particularly useful uh, resource otherwise. Stress on the I believe. Because again, I could be very wrong. Now, I also know that I have made some of the bobbers, but I would rather make them all a second time to err on the side of caution. Presently, I'm aware I'm at about 75 to 80% of all of the production requirements for, um, what's it called? The uh, craftables. So I've made a lot of them. So I'm feeling vaguely confident with that. I've still got a lot to do, of course, but that's not the end of the world. Okay, so we've got quite a lot of kegs and preserve jars. The preserve jars, I still need a couple more, so I'm going to need some more coal for that, but that's not a super difficult uh, thing to achieve and should give me a decent, um, decent return. So, what else can we do here today? I do need to double check um, with regards to the kegs as to what sort of things that I've actually got available. I'm going to be producing so much starfruit going forwards. I'm of the opinion that turning starfruit into wine as well as the jelly, that's going to be a um, probably the best plan I've got on that one because I believe that they have a... Um, of course, yes, preserves do have a lower return, but a higher turnover compared to the wines. I believe a wine takes seven days, whereas a preserve takes four. That should give me a decent money spinner, because it's still a very valuable crop, and I think it's a multiplication type uh, calculation that's done for the jars um, versus the kegs. Now, the internal layout of the other shed that I've got, which is currently growing a mixture of pumpkins, I'd like to replace the pumpkins that are being grown there with fairy roses. Now, as previously pointed out by the ever-helpful uh, Khan Wolf, 
I made a slight miscalculation in that I believed, falsely sadly, that using um, the fairy roses would allow me to generate fairy dust, which would give me more money by f high speeding the um, wine aging. Now, of course, as I'm chatting nonsense, we've started a lovely little cutscene with Leo and Willie and um, Linus, and it's probably the sweetest cutscene, I think, that we see, because the success story of essentially finding a lost child who was abandoned through no fault of his own by the elements, who created his own family with the parrots and has actually successfully integrated himself into real, like, the, the regular um, world, which is kind of beautiful. But it is also nice that he feels happy enough to separate himself from his island upbringing. And it's... There are enough stories about finding lost children where they've been, like, raised by dogs or um, other weird ones. I think there was one that... Oh, goodness. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the stuff that I remember from doing developmental psychology. And some of the stories are horrific. Like, genuinely genuinely horrific and I would highly recommend you don't look them up because they are heart-wrenching a lot of them and also just downright absurd um, a lot of them so yes that's a, that's a thing but it's a nice success story that Leo has his home which is similar to it, it's it has ginger island through and through it it's like it's layout it, the fact that it's a tree and it's sweet that he lives near Linus and he doesn't need, like, a parent, like, near him, but he uses the villagers as, in that sense, which is kind of sweet. Now, as you saw there, I've got a lot of um, people that still need uh, their relationships being fully built with. I say a lot of people. I just need a couple more, because once I can get the full friendship with every villager, then I'm pretty much golden for that part of... Um, Mr. Key's challenge of perfection. Now, the tracker on Ginger Island, I'm going to have to go and check at some point to sort of see where I'm actually at at the moment. Now, this is what I was mentioning about the, the quarry, because I've saturated it heavily with a lot of trees, which is probably the best plan of action for myself, I consider. But I think I might need to visit here again and actually slap down a large quantity of tree fertilizer on all of the trees to ensure that as many of them grow as possible. Now, of course, a number of those trees aren't going to grow because there are trees that are too close to one another, which isn't the end of the world, but that is just how it is kind of affected. And what I would like to do is... Um, look at the layout here so maybe if i get the opportunity perhaps in the winter because there will be less stuff for me to administer on high ridge farm versus ginger island farm um i might be able to sort of sort out this layout here and i think trying to figure that out is a good shout but that's um potentially a consideration for another day as I said, it's. I think that's going to be something that I should look at more so for um, the winter period. Okay, so it's a good six o'clock now. So we've, we've done a good day's work of running around uh, the Ginger Island and uh, the regular farm. Now, I know that one of the things that I, I've noticed is, of course, that I tend to go to bed on farm as late as possible. Now, that's not just because I personally view um, I, I, there's always lots of things that I want to do, but personally, I also find it difficult to go to sleep before midnight. I find that midnight is the end of the day, and that's when one should go to sleep, which does work a little bit counterproductively to myself when I've got um, the day job and I need to get up. Um, what time do I usually get up for that? Oh, about... 8 a.m. So, you know, I've got like a good eight hours sleep there. Maybe. 
if I don't doom scroll on my phone before I go to sleep, which I'm sure we're all a little bit guilty of on occasion. It's far too easy to do. That's the problem, is just sit there with the phone out. I try to put the phone in um, within reach so that I can uh, sort out my alarm on it. But I think if I was to sort out an actual alarm clock in my bedroom, that might actually be a better way of doing things. But hey-ho. That's, uh, again, a consideration for another day. And also real life, which is never easy. It's always confusing, which is why I play Stardew Valley, because it's really, I say easy, but it's comparatively, it's much easier. I mean, heck, if money was that this easy to make, that I could spend 28 days growing a crop to full size and then sell it for silly money. Oh man, I'd be all over that. That would be great. Because um, I would like to have a 4 million um, guinea pigs. Um, <laughs> or, well, hell. Four million sterling, that'd be nice. Just to sit here on fat stacks of cash. Um, yeah, it's okay. It'd be back-breaking labour in some regards, but how often do you actually eat as the farmer? Um, I tend to only eat when I'm about to do something, like go down to Ginger Island, or if I'm going into the Skull Caves, and I'll just eat a food that gives me luck, um, or speed boosts, or something of that ilk. So, you know... That's a logic, I guess. But oh well. Right. Now, what else can we sort out here today? Well, as you can see, we've got lots of the kegs have produced lovely wines today. So that's going to replace that with some more star fruit. So that'll be fine and dandy. And, of course, all the star fruit being thrown in. You can see I've got quite a stack of the stuff. And it is probably prudent for me to move a number of the star fruits into another chest um, elsewhere in on in the other um, shed that is full, uh, well, going to be filled with kegs, as that will give me a, a better turnaround on that sort of front. So yeah, that's uh, that's what we're going to do for this at least. There is of course a number of uh, other things that I kind of want to build on the farm, and. It is a little bit of a money sink in some ways because I'm going to be spending money to do su such things, but it will create more money for me. Now, I do remember seeing somebody mentioning previously that when it comes to the, the layout of the farm, like, like these particular rooms here. Now, yes, what I've done here is very useful in the sense that the floor space that is available for one to grow in here is much greater than the floor space that is provided by um, the shed. So it, it's a, a net gain in floor space. But the trouble is, it's actually a lot harder to grow and harvest things in here, um, which is definitely something I've encountered and dealt with, which kind of sucks. Um, it would be nice if it was a lot easier, but unfortunately it is not. But, oh well. It is what we live with. Okay. So I've got my other Junimo hut, which I built the other day, which is good. And that will be able to harvest the large quantity of pumpkins that will be coming through from there. Because that is the main and only, I think actually the only crop that this farm will really be producing in any numbers. Yes, there are some like corn plants lying around, I think, somewhere on the farm, but... Again, the, the wheat and the sunflowers and the corn was literally only there to help preserve the soil. And the corn less so, really more the, the sunflowers and the wheat. Because, of course, those um, are kind of more needed uh, in that they are harvestable and removable. Whereas the other, um, the, the corn, will just continually take up space and will be somewhat frustrating for me to deal with later on. So that's that's a thing on that run. So yeah. So we've got lots of milk, which is good. We're gonna pop that away and get that being um, processed by the machines, which is lovely. And we should probably, careful, head on back to the farm itself for now. 
Now let's uh, get ready for the next day, really much. It's just going to be making sure that the bombs are all sorted and put away. Um, because as we've seen, me and bombs should not be allowed out in the same bloody place. Now, I'm painfully aware I didn't make a big explicit because I realised that I was in the middle of a, a ramble. But, I have detonated too many bombs on the farm and damaged my infrastructure far too often. And I feel incredibly stupid a lot of the time when it comes to having done that, which is very frustrating, as I'm sure you can imagine. So, it is what I have to deal with, uh, my general idiocy, and um, yeah, very, very annoying. I do need to just stop carrying them. I think this is one of the big problems I have as a, a player, is that I find it difficult to not... So I'll set up a selection of things that I will need, for example, so I need my tools, which means I have an, almost an entire inventory bar full of tools that are a lot of the time not being used, such as the pan or the uh, the fishing rod. Or at the moment, the hoe. The only two that I really need are the axe and the mining pick. I mean, as well as the sword. Because I know that at some point I will probably encounter a monster. Because that's kind of how things work. But at the same time, the monsters that are wild are the ones on Ginger Island, which are the slimes, which I'm immune to, so... Shouldn't really have to worry about them as much. Now, one of the other considerations I've got as well is, up in the top right of the farm here, in the small room with the butterfly house, I've got those two other pots. Now, what do I plant in them? I've got three coffee plants, three tea plants, Two hops and two cacti. I kind of want to have another continuous production uh, crop. But what? It's kind of like debating what would actually be financially the uh, <clears throat> the best one for me to use. Because there is there's got to be a something that would be, you know, the most prudent on that regard. But I'm not sure. In the same way, I've also got all these trees around the farm, and I'm debating whether it might be a good idea to try and move the fruit trees, like the apple and the But the trouble is they're aging. They're, they've, they're giving better quality fruits, because they've been around for a while on the farm. Um, which is kind of cool. So I, I didn't realise that that was a thing for ages, that the longer you've had a tree, the better quality fruit it produces. And that's, I think... A, Fantastically adorable. Now, I built this other scarecrow only because I was concerned in, in a particularly silly sense. Because I saw a crow fly over. And I don't know where it might have come from. I don't believe there's anywhere that isn't covered. But I am going to err on the side of caution. I'm not sure where it came from. And that does somewhat frustrate me because I don't know. And I don't like that as a thing. But anyway, I'm going to pop all this here. Okay, so we've got the... Ooh, you saved scared off seven crows. Well done, scared crows. So we've got the fish ponds giving us the usefuls. And I guess that's something that I should also potentially look at is... Like, the, the caviars and rows, I think that they do generate you quite a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, but their production, their physical space versus their production ability isn't as good as you might hope. The reason, I, one of the reasons I've got the lava eels specifically, though, is because they do generate the spicy eel. But their turnaround as well for, I think caviar has a lot, an extra day on its production speed. So, the sturgeon do essentially slow the production rate down. Which is slightly annoying, but we live. But I'm going to pick on my way through all of the, the fruits and veg that we have in here. 
Of course, I want to work my way through the more valuable stuff first, but I know that it'll come to a point where I actually have the least valuable things available left, which, you know, that's just how it goes. Now, one of the other things I'm also sort of looking at is the the special orders from like, the community board. And I believe I have actually done all of the things that are required from it. Now, I've done a couple of ones from uh, like the Pierre's produce one where he wants like all the, the gold quality vegetables as well as Lewis's, which have given me two of the mini shipping bins. And I don't really know where to put the damn things, which is a bit ridiculous potentially. But the other thing I'm also looking at is like things like having the stone chests. I actually prefer the look of them more than the wooden one. And because I find that wood is a more valuable resource to me, I don't feel quite as bad about using stone to make the chests. So, you know, that's a thing. Um, let's see, what other things? Now, I know that some of them aren't repeatable. I don't, well, I don't believe they're repeatable. So I don't think you can repeat um, Pam's one, which is um, where she gives you the fishing channel, where you get, make the potato juice, the potato vodka. <laughs> well, should be vodka, but it's not. Um, I think. Um, so I'm not sure. What other things, um, I mean, yes, some of them are repeatable and can give you useful things. Like the, the the bug recipe when, like, I haven't seen that one again because it gives you the recipe to make the quality bobber and other things. I don't know if I've, I think I must have done, like, all of the ones that can be, um, sort of like the one-off ones versus the, um repeatable ones so yeah that's a thing but oh well righty let's sort of figure this one out at least um and yeah so I'm going to smelt up a bunch more of the copper and iron, because that's what I've got in my inventory. Again, because that's going to help me produce uh, replacement kegs after my bombing issue. Um, because my bombing accident was not helpful. And yes, I feel very stupid, as we know. But anyway. Now... Gonna quickly grab these in here. Now I might plant a couple more trees in here. Um, I don't think that would be a bad idea. Um, it'd be kind of nice actually to plant some more um, things in there. And probably not a bad idea in the grand scheme of things. Now, I know full well that I could get uh, a couple of the sprinkler attachments for the greenhouse is iridium sprinklers, like the, quality, the, the pressure thing. And it would mean that I would only need four, I believe. Um, but the trade-off is, though, I'd need to remove some of the ancient fruit plants and let them regrow to do that. Now, I don't think that would be impossible or a terrible thing for me to do. I mean, I could do it. The other thing as well, I could actually use some of the ancient fruit to... Um, I think maybe this is something that I should plan for year four rather than year three. And before I achieve perfection. Maybe I wouldn't mind relaying out the inside of the greenhouse with only four sprinklers rather than six. Now the two additional ones on the wood aren't exactly a problem. It's just that they are there and it annoys me a little bit. Um, but I could also replace the soil, like the fertilizer in there with the ridiculous quality one because actually that'd be kind of nice to have iridium quality ancient fruit i'm not really sure how valuable that would be or how much more valuable that is but hey that's a thing 
Now, whilst I'm here in um, Skull Caves, I'm looking for three primary things. Copa. I said, I said copper in a funny way. Mostly because I couldn't figure out whether I wanted to say coal first or copper first. And actually, they are both two of the things that I'm primarily focusing upon. Copper and coal. As well as iron. And they're the primary ores that I'm after. Now, I know full well that, yes, I could go through the early stages of the mines to kind of obtain those. But I haven't been to Skull Caves for a while, so that was, you know, a little personal venture choice on this one. However, we've got large quantities of gold, which is uh, nice and all, but we've got some more diamonds. So again, that's uh, a useful friendship item. Now, I know it's loved by a couple of villagers. I'm assuming it's more than, like, two or three, however I think it is. Uh, yeah. Eh, we'll see. So we're going to plant this bomb here. I'm going to detonate that um, blasted quartz, which I just realised was there. Because quartz is, again, is one of those useful products. And I kind of want that a bit more. And actually thinking about quartz, I'm thinking about the things that you can make with it, which are like the solar panels, the, um, the plant pots. And now that I'm thinking about the plant pots, I'm considering... Now, I've got that room, that special shed that has where I've currently got a mixture of pumpkins and fairy roses being grown in there. And as I mentioned, the fairy roses, I originally wanted them because of their ability to be turned into uh, fairy powder. And sadly, as I realised, I was incorrect about my assumption that for value's sake, it would be more beneficial for me to do that, to, uh, to high-speed the aging of wines. Which is a shame. But I would also quite like to have a dock of the damn stuff because I feel that having a quantity of it is probably not a bad thing because there may be times when I need to grow it uh, to high speed the growth or the production of something so that's uh, kind of a consideration I've got at the moment and well I've got to try and figure out what other things that I do I need to do with quartz. And the thing is, the refined quartz quantities that I need for solar panels is quite phenomenal. So, I would very much like to turn the, the desert into a solar panel farm, but my goodness, it's the, the resources requirement is going to be quite phenomenal. Which is a little frustrating, um, to be honest about it. Um... So I've got to try and figure that one out at least. It shouldn't be too difficult to sort out the quantities of cop of copper, nearly said copper. So of quartz, but it's the fact that it's trying to find it. It's not like it's a, an easy. There's not like a floor that it's likely more likely to spawn on, as far as I'm aware. It's just, oh look, there's some quartz. We'll grab it. So for example, there's some quartz. I'll probably grab it because that would be sensible. Now, again, I know it's not a particularly high value on its initial, but I'm also debating whether it's a particularly good idea to smash open all of these Omni Geodes, or whether it's more useful for me to turn the Omni Geodes into treasure troves and have the treasure troves opened. Now, of course, it, it's 25G for each one to be opened by Clint. Or, uh, for the Geodes, because, of course, you can't crack open the treasure troves yourself. It's a coal. And time. And I would consider that coal is more valuable than 25G. Ooh, that's a nice stack of iridium sprinklers. That's cool as hell. Um, so, as long as an Omni Geo, on average, produces something that gives you 25G in value, breaking them open is financially viable and, and good but is the reward from a treasure trove better and that's something I don't know because again it needs to be a minimum of 75g because I believe it's three omni geodes for one treasure trove if that is the conversion if it's five which I, I don't honestly remember off the top of my head then, of course, that would be 125. So it's 
It is a consideration on that one. But I need to work that one out. Um, what's um, viable. Now, one of the things I've also got to consider as well, while I'm roaming around at the moment, is... I've not seen the Mr. Key challenge to get to the bottom of... Sorry, the bottom, sorry. Floor 100 of the Skull Caves on hard mode. Now, obviously, Mr. Key has a, a random opportunity to present that quest for me, so it might turn up at a later date. I don't know. But I, I'm curious to see what makes it so hard. Um, of course, in the same way that, yes, the monsters are going to be harder, because, well, duh, that's how the hard mode works. But I'm curious to see how so and what changes. Okay, so we've got some iridium. I should probably try and grab that. What would I not need? Well, I don't really need the hardwood, weirdly, or the clay. I've got about a good stock of, like, 400 clay. I don't really need any more of that. Oh, we've got a warp totem to the farm. Well, that can get sold. I don't need that, do I? I've got the blooming return scepter. Now, the trouble is, like, it'd be nice if fire quartz also could be smelted into refined quartz. And this is where somebody's going to be like, in the comments, actually, no, Waldress, you can do that. You're just an idiot. Which I'm painfully aware of. I am a moron. Um, so that that is a thing, unfortunately. Ah, oh, some more copper. So I still need a bit more of that. I mean, it's only 7.30. We've still got an opportunity to meet up with Clint in the bar um, to show him the s copper. Um, shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Okay. And the thing is, I don't really need to, like, majorly try to foster the relationship with him. It's, uh, who else is it? I think it's, like, Jazz and, uh, Kent. Now, uh, Kent's not that tricky this time of year, because hazelnuts are in great abundance. And Fiddlehead Risotto is also another easy one to do. So, like, the hazelnuts to make the, the roasted hazelnuts, that's, that's going to be pretty easy. Um... And I shouldn't find it too difficult to um, obtain, which is good. Because, of course, I've got that small patch of the farm that I've just got growing uh, the, the autumn wild seeds, which is really the entire reason I have it there, is just to allow me to generate those. What's that? I've not seen that ring before. Uh... Okay, let's get rid of that. An immunity ring, an immunity band. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen that ring before. That's interesting. Okay, so we've got the uh, the copper, so let's just head home. Okay, so we've got all the... Just dump what we've got in the inventory in here. We'll grab the other bits out of that. We'll just grab these. Slap them in there as well. Because that's another consideration is, do I build another shed on the farm, which is my dedicated production shed. So that's where I put all the resources and I essentially have the resource shed, which actually if I was... To... <sighs> it's annoying because it'll mean I'd have to remove those trees that are directly above the shipping chest. Um, I think I can move that shipping chest as well. That... Hmm. But my, my logic is if I put a shed there and have that as the production shed and have all the chests inside of it and everything laid out so it's designed and designated as the this is where all the furnaces are this is where all the thing like the ores go and all those other chests are and then have one of those workbenches that sits in the middle of let's say four or five chests that I can well, so actually would have to sit in a four chests so that I could easily access it and all four of those chests and just dump resources in so I can just produce things very easily so maybe that'd be a a plan Possibly. Right, so we've got some oysters. And the thing is, I don't come to the beach very often because at the same time, like, why, why do I need to go to the beach? I've caught all the fish from here. I've got all of the, I've got, I've got the Master Angler achievement. That's the thing. I've got it. And there's not much that really can be found at the beach other than the corals. 
and the sea urchins. And I think I might need to start storing them a bit more. Because I think they come in more handy with a couple of the... I know they are coming useful for the speed grow uh, resources. So potentially I need to look at that. I think I've made all the speed growing soils. Like the fertilizers. I'm pretty sure I have at least. But... Hey, that's, uh, that's what I'm looking at. Now, one of the things I know I haven't made is that damn jack-o'-lantern. So I need to make that at some point. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I have made the speed grows by, you know, making them all. Have I made a campfire? I've never even used a campfire, to be fair, so making it wouldn't be a bad shout. I wonder when you put it down, if you put it down in the environment, if it stays there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to those because they might be useful going forward. Hmm. Considering everything and figuring everything out at the moment, that's kind of what I've got to go for, isn't it? Um. I. Let's see. Okay, so there's nothing, I mean, because there's nothing from the Junimo, because, of course, it's not had an opportunity to produce anything yet. So, duh. Of course. Okay, so we're going to grab, oh my goodness, look at all of those glorious, glorious pineapples. So that's going to be another swath of pineapple jelly and jams and such, which is great. That's the thing is, like, I do enjoy pineapple. It's one of those odd things. I was pretty convinced that I was actually allergic to pineapple for a while. Um, because I had my throat close up a little bit when I ate some pineapple gelato. I think looking back on it, it might have been just that one specific place. There was something in it that made me have a very itchy and uncomfortable and slightly closing throat. But I'm also painfully aware about the fact that uh, pineapple flesh does contain an enzyme that essentially <laughs> starts attacking your own body. So it's very much of a... How far that goes, I'm not sure. So, uh, it's one of those I need to have a look at more closely. But uh, unfortunately, it was one of those things that my father could never seem to remember or bothered to care about because I'm like no I'm not going to eat the pineapple that you're providing for me as a thing because I can't it's not that I he didn't care I think it's more that I don't think he believed that I was because it had happened more spontaneously and the thing is as I know it was because of this one particular gelato and I know I've seen them make the gelato there they do use real fresh fruit in their ingredients that that is like an admirable thing for them but of course it was where I sort of went I spiralled into a I'm not sure so I'm going to avoid anything that could potentially run that risk which I don't think is a terrible plan like if you, you're not sure if you're allergic to something it's probably not a bad idea to be I'm going to err on the side of caution thanks a sort of decision I don't think that's a bad one Okay, so we've got another diamond, which is nice. And let's head to bed for the now. I'm kind of glad that I put the lights in here. Yes, I know I could turn them on and off and all that. They're, they're nice to have um, in the farmhouse, and they just keep things a better, bit better illuminated. So I made another 100,000 there today, which is good. Um, of course, I still want to have some days where I make more than that. But we're over the 4 million mark, which is good. And... Oh, that's very sweet. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of my th like, sort of logic and thought process on that one, is how am I going to make as much money as possible? Now, the other thing as well, I am half tempted to replace the coffee plants there with the water-retaining soil so that I don't have to water them every day because it is kind of frustrating that I have to do that. And maybe just sort out the layout and maybe put them in with the tea plants and so on and so forth. But the other consideration is the the shed that I've got that has all the pumpkins and fairy roses growing in it. I did joke a little while back about why, as a British person, do I not have a tea shed? Ooh, wood. That's actually really helpful. And 
You know what? It, it's a thing. It is a genuine uh, consideration. I think that's quite a, a sensible thing to think about. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm very, very British, and I, although I don't drink very much tea, um, it's just not something I'm particularly partial to. It, it should be a, it should be something that I have I'm growing on the farm. And a shed full of it would be quite good. But I could also have a sh half of the shed generating coffee for me. And because I went to visit um, the bar and I bought a lot of coffee so that I could make the stack of espressos that I have. So I don't think it's a bad thing, honestly. Um, and then again, yeah, it'll be handy to have... Because, again, I'll be able to produce the, the speed boost. And the speed boost itself is phenomenally handy. In the same way that that's why I like having spicy eel. Because it's a speed boost. It's not the only food that gives you a speed boost. I mean, there, there are a couple of them. The super meal is another. And just high speeding around everywhere is really good. Okay. Now, looking at that. Oh, so we need to put a, a sap tapper on that um, hardwood tree now. And I probably should put another lightning rod in there because I believe it was being that it was struck by lightning that is what caused um, me to lose one of the other trees there, which was a shame. Now, I don't believe that when you place a tree down, uh, if you cut down the tree and I just have with the stump, I don't believe it regrows. I'm not sure on that, though. And I will freely admit that I'm not sure. Because that is... G genuinely something I'm unsure about. So... Now, so you see, that's the thing that's can making me balk at the idea of cutting down that damn ch those two damn apple trees. Because look at that, that apple is a gold quality apple. And there are two of them that produce them. I don't really want to move that. So I wonder if I move the the shipping container. I think I should probably remove the braziers for now. Move the shipping container down. Put the shed next to the house. Move the lightning rod. That would probably work for sort of like the layout for that. I'm going to have a look at that. I'm going to go and visit um, Robin and have a look at that potentially. Oh, look at all this lovely ancient fruit. Look at this. Fantastic. So, yeah, this is my consideration in here is to essentially shuffle the sprinklers over by a couple and replant all of this with the better quality fertilizer. Now, I know that that's going to take time for them all to regrow, and that's going to be annoying. But that's definitely going to be a year four job, not a year three job, because... Really, as well, I don't care so much. Because, honestly, the... the I mean, let me have a think about this. Ancient fruit is going to be used um, for making ancient fruit wine. So being an iridium quality ancient fruit wine means very little to me. Honestly. So, if anything, I would be better digging it all up and replacing it all with water retention soil and then kind of just watering it once and then walking away, wouldn't I? If I honestly look at it. And I wonder if that's the same for starfruit. Because... I kind of got to look at that one on, a, on an honest level. Like, what is more viably useful to me? Um, hmm... I may also need to have a quick look at my skills and uh, the perks that I've generated as playing through on the farm. Um, because I can't remember if I have the artisan... I think I've got the artisan skill. I mean, I 
blooming hope so. Because I don't. Um, I don't remember taking agriculturalist where it increases the speed of growing. Um, and I definitely didn't take the animal products being more valuable. So, uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to have a think. Gonna have to have a real think on that one, aren't I? Now, of course, I do need to make some more mayonnaise machines and... After my accident on um, Friday, where I frustrated myself and decided that I wasn't even going to talk about it, because essentially, really boiling it down, I decided that I was going to ignore the fact that I'm an idiot, um, because I wanted to gloss over the fact that I'd done it again. But I will openly and honestly say here, I detonated my mayonnaise machines, blew up a bunch of hay, and I'm really glad that the animals aren't injured by the fact that I detonated a bomb in their blasted coop. Because my goodness, do I feel stupid. Now I need to put some more mayonnaise machines in here. Thankfully, because I've got the production um, coming from dinosaurs predominantly, it does take a little bit longer for them to produce eggs, so I kind of worry a little bit less on that one. But, that is a thing. Okay, so we've got another f newly born animal. And I'm going to name this one after one of my other guinea pigs, um, which was Squiggle. Uh, debating between Patch and Squiggle. Patch was my first um, guinea pig I got as an adult. Um, with his little brother, Floofer. And then we have Squiggle. It was a guinea pig I did feel kind of kind of sorry for in in some ways because when we got him he was an adorable tiny little bundle of floof he was such a sweetheart as well he was a very very loving guinea pig but we got him because cinder toffee which we went, um, who was our largest of the guineas didn't like other guinea pigs and he was only happy with humans now, I wasn't sure if this was kind of just an, uh, a teenage guinea piggy thingy. Which sounds very silly to say. But he was um, an adorable attention seeker. He didn't like guinea pigs. And he was very much... He liked me the most. He would very upset... He would be very upset if I wasn't around. And it was very adorable. So he, I will shamelessly admit he's kind of been my favourite guinea pig. Because he was so cuddly and so loving. Now, Squiggle, I saw him um, needing to be rescued. And I got him and I thought, well, he's a baby. He's about 10 months younger than Cinder Toffee. Maybe he'll, being that he's a baby, he's only eight weeks old, he might be able to... Um, sort of be influenced in a positive way by Cinder Toffee, and Cinder Toffee doesn't get like all ridiculous. I think the issues he had was he was trying to bond with a pair that already kind of, well, when he was bought in a trio, I don't think he got on with the other guinea pig who was also trying to have dominance fights, but it was, it was bad. To be fair, we could have separated either Cinder Toffee or Bumble. It was a, one of the two. But Cinder Toffee was very aggressive, so we removed him. And he really loved Squiggle. They were inseparable. But unfortunately, Cinder Toffee passed away only a few months, maybe two, three months after I got Squiggle. So, poor Squiggle was left on his own. Um, and that's when I ended up getting Nutmeg. Because Nutmeg was also, again, an adorable little baby. I saw him and just fell in love with his cute little face. I've got a shameless thing for Tufty Abyssinian breed guinea pigs. I think they're just the most adorable little fluffy monsters and I love them. And yeah, he lasted maybe, he lived up good like two and a half years. So that's quite young for the guinea pigs that I've had because most of them have lasted quite a long time. Um, 
Sinatofi was the earliest to pass away, like the youngest, because he had a tumour. I think he was about a year and a half. Um, squiggle at two and a bit years. Um, then Floofa was probably the next at three and a half. Gunny, about... I mean, he lasted about four years, so he did pretty well. And then Patch died at six. It's Nutmeg died at six and a half, and Bumble lived to seven. Um, they've done quite well. And my two remaining boys that I have, um, Baby Floof Monster. His, his full name is Floof Monster, but he's a baby, so I don't care he's fully grown. He, he will always be baby to me, because he's an absolute fluffy, cuddly monster. It, it, and and um, his brother Teddy are about a year and a half, maybe two years old now. Actually, no, they're probably going to be at least two years old, because when I rescued them, they were probably closer to a year old. Yeah, it must be. So, yeah, you know, it is a, it's always a shame when you lose a, a loved pet. But I think it's nice for me being able to have a little memory of them in-game. Um, and I know it's probably a little silly, but... Hey, it means that I... That's why I've got the naming rights tier, is because I'm putting all of you who, who, who contribute via Patreon on the same tier as my guinea pigs. <laughs> that is... Whoa, <laughs> sign of love from the walrus. <laughs> and one of the things that I think I will do as well is now that we're coming up to the end of the year as well, so I'm actually recording this on Christmas Eve um, to go live for Christmas Eve, and that's partly because I recorded this earlier in the week and actually did all the audio and when I listened to a playback of it I realized that I'd ended up doing something wrong with the audio mixing and I sounded just wrong I wasn't happy with it so this is mark 2 electric boogaloo um, of this particular video which I know is a, an odd thing to be rambling about but it's the, the trials and tribulations of attempting to YouTube it's a thing but yeah uh, one of the things I'm considering doing is that I need to, during the Christmas break, I might do a little bit more recording. Um, and actually start trying to do some of the more silly episodes that I'd like to do. Such as the the 100th episode, which we're now at like 120 now almost. So this is 119. Um, so I've done real good at that. But I would like to do a, a celebration episode. Um, and maybe a New Year's episode as well. Um, and I might take a photo of my desk so you can see some of the silliness that actually happens in my uh, workspace because I am called the walrus because of T.Y. Beanie Babies. <laughs> Which I know, I know sounds very, very silly, very peculiar, but the T.Y. Beanie Baby walrus is sat on my desk. It was a gift from somebody I cared about a lot. Um, and that walrus is just sat there and will always be a, a, <laughs> a reminder of the, the, the silly nickname that I've, I was given, which was being a walrus. And that is because I'm horribly obese. Um, all the rolls, all the folds, and a big blood monster, and I have really big teeth. Um, <laughs> I, I joke, I do kid. Um, I'm not actually a three-ton walrus. That's terrifying, the idea of an actual walrus. Or am I? Ooh. So I, you can see here, I've just quickly skipped a little bit of time here because I made a slight error when it came to the recording, actually. of um, I might have hit the stop recording button like a moron. But it did give me the opportunity to quickly disappear over to um, the desert, which is what I went to do. Went over to the desert and I went and grabbed some more starfruit seeds because I was running out. Hence why I'm now, I've dipped below the 4 million mark again. Although I'm sure with tonight, when this occurs, it'll sort of change that fortune very quickly again as we'll end back up at over 4 million. What I'm hoping is by the end of week two, if I can average out a million a week, which I don't think is impossible, that could work out quite nicely. But one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look more carefully so um, at what have I got skills-wise, 
should I respec myself skills wise in the sewers? Because that is a thing you can do. And you speak to the weird fat dog statue and it allows you to re. Um, I think it's a dog, it might be a raccoon, I'm not sure. It allows you to respec your um, talents almost. Um, that you choose at level 5 and 10, respectively, for each of the uh, different skills. So, there's, there's some ideas um, on what to actually do for all that. Um, so, what I'm going to do, though, while I'm here, is... Just quickly nip up here for a moment. I think I'm going to go and quickly double check if there are any available quests from Mr. Key. I think they refresh every Monday. I'm not sure. No, that's fine. And okay, so we're, we've got 86% of the crafting recipes are made, 97% of the cooking recipes are made. So I'm feeling pretty confident with those. Um, I've got 76 key gems. Well, I don't, I don't think I've got a deconstructor, so I'll grab one of those. I'm going to buy some Mr. Key seasoning, because I don't know what that does. Um, I'll whack it in the fridge. And you know what? Another Junimo chest, because if I then have them... Actually, let's get two. I could have them in locations where I could... I mean, in theory, if you can demolish them with an axe or a pickaxe and move them, even if they're full. I could use them when I'm mining. Couldn't I? Because in theory, what I could use them for is a, a, is a repository. I'm going to test that. Because I don't know if that's a thing. Kind of cool if it is. Because that would be interesting. But I'm going to make some more truffle oil, because I've got the truffles, and that's probably a good shout for me to honestly do. Um, so, let's have a think. Uh, anything else that I can do? So I'm going to pop those in there, I can make sashimi from that, and dump all the ginger in there. So I've got a lot of ginger, actually. I should probably go through the fridge and see if there's anything in here that's actually worth me um, slapping in there. Honestly. Um, got some coffee. Some more coffee so I can turn that into um, again, make that into something useful. Um, and we've got some more diamonds. I wouldn't mind making a few more crystallariums. That would probably be a good one for me to make, wouldn't it? Um, because that's pretty valuable in the grand scheme of things, isn't it? So yeah, we'll do that as well. Um, so let's give that a, a, give that a crack. Okay. So, what else can we do? Well, we'll dump that in there. That's lovely and all. Um. What's the next plan on this one, I think? That's that's the, the next question, isn't it? Trying to figure out, going forward, what things are going to be more valuable when I turn them into preserves and pickles. That's going to be a thing, isn't it? Because, yeah, that's, that's a thing. I need to figure out a bit more. Well, let's dump what we've got in here for now. It'll, it'll be fine and all. Um... See what we can get out of that. Okay. And honestly, like, when it comes to it, making... Um, there are certain crops that are more valuable than others. Lo and behold, who would have guessed? Um, and just kind of figure out what's going to be... Uh, the most financially viable for me. Um, honestly. <laughs> So yeah, I've got I've got some a few more plans um, going forward with the rest of the week. That's that's going to be what we're looking at, and how we're going to organise all of this madness. So, moving forward, we have a lot of other silliness that we want to do. I think that's kind of a reasonable thing to sort of figure out, isn't it? Um, 
So yeah, let's see what we can work out here. What can we make and what would work out well? So we've got all these pumpkins. We're going to replace them with fairy seeds. I think the pumpkins are that they're not the most valuable of all of the crops that are available when it comes to uh, turning into preserves. But they are the most valuable autumn crop. Starfruit far outstrips them. There, there, there's no ifs and or buts on that one. Um... So that is just how it goes. It's um, far, far outstrips them. So yeah. Now another thing I've also got to figure out and sort of think about is, is ancient fruit the most valuable fruit? I'm pretty sure it is. But I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there for today. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you did like, um, please do like, share, and subscribe, as apparently the walrus is having another child. We definitely need the subscribers now. <laughs> um, and any comments, but always, always read, and I always do try to respond to them all. So hopefully I'll catch you again the next time the walrus plays Stargy Valley. <laughs>